Chapter 28 Caitlin was already sitting in the kitchen, talking to his mother, when Jack shambled out early the next morning. Even his shower had done little to wake him up, and his feet were dragging. What's wrong with you? His mother wondered. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine, he mumbled, grabbing an energy drink from the fridge. Just didn't sleep that well last night. You want anything to eat? He shook his head. I don't think so. Thanks though, mom. No problem, sweetie, and don't be afraid to give me a call if you need to come home early or anything. Eleanor was looking at her own busy day, but her family was important to her. It always had been and always would be. Caitlin pushed back from the table and slid a notebook to his mother. My mom wanted me to give this to you. I'm not sure what it is but she thought it might help. With that done she pushed Jack from the room. You seemed eager to leave, he said, opening the driver's side door for her. After realizing how powerful your mother is, I'm having a hard time talking to her. I'll just need a couple of days to readjust my thinking again, is all. Well, at least you're aware all it'll take is a little time to adjust. In the stories people never seem to get that. She snorted. Only because of my mom and dad. You should have seen me before I talked to them. After we rescued your sister and dad, it really opened my eyes to how strong she is. When we got home Sunday morning, I was so close to freaking out and never talking to anyone in your family again. Jack quirked his head at that. Was what she did underneath the warehouse really that terrifying? He thought back to what his mother had done and how the others had reacted. What she did in that room was, beyond anything I have ever seen done by anyone, including those on the council. But no it wasn't that, or rather just that. It was how efficient and calmly she did it. I could tell that she wasn't straining herself at all. My dad couldn't have done what she did, and that wasn't even her using all her strength. Jack reached out and rested his hand on Caitlin's arm, risking the quick touch as she began to shout. She took in a heaving breath and slowed the car to a stop in the middle of the road. He didn't say anything and just let her breathe, calming herself in her own way. The sound of a car honking behind them woke her from her inner gymnastics a minute later. Sorry, she muttered simply as the car lurched forward. It's fine, he replied. I can't say as I understand just how powerful my mom is, but I'm glad to know she is. I have a feeling she is going to need to be for whatever is coming. She snorted. That is the understatement of the century. You really lucked out with her as a parent. I doubt anyone else would have been able to keep that seal on you like she did. No one else would have had the power reserves to do so. She pulled into the school parking lot and turned off the car with a sigh. Jack stared at the building before them, an odd feeling welling up inside him. I think I'm beginning to understand what you meant when you said we lived in a different world than everyone else here. After everything that happened, it's going to be hard to pretend to still be normal. At the same time though, I don't think I'm ready to simply ditch this life just yet. He may have had only one real friend at school, but the place helped to ground him. It was normal, and brought the rest of his life into focus as a result. Caitlin shook her head. That's not what I meant back then. Not at all. What you're experiencing is something different. Besides, I'm beginning to see the appeal of living a normal life. You are. He hopped out of the car and around to her door. Well, it's a lot more freeing than my old school. I always had to be on my guard and act a certain way. I don't have to worry about that here. If nothing else, I like that. I can appreciate how a place like this would be freeing, Jack said after a moment as they walked side by side towards the school. Classes passed in a boring blur as the duo tried to stay focused with middling success. Steve provided some entertainment during lunch period, but they only shared a single class period on Mondays. Despite how grounding going to school was, there was simply too much other stuff going on for them to care at the moment. They wanted to know what was happening with the council, the domain, and most of all, Oberon. As soon as the last bell rang, Caitlin and Jack raced from their seats and out of the classroom. The powerful engine of the car roared as Caitlin pressed the pedal to the floor, only to hit the brakes a second later as another car took the turn ahead of them. She growled and tapped the steering wheel. Calm down, we'll get there when we get there, he said, trying to be the voice of reason. It was the wrong thing to say. She turned to glare at him, her eyes flashing. Never tell a woman to calm down. 
he leaned away and held up his hands. Okay, chill. We both just want to get to my house as soon as possible. Caitlin's hands gripped the steering wheel so hard her knuckles popped. She gave a stiff nod and silently glared at the car in front of them, which was doing exactly the speed limit. It was an action that she seemed to be taking as a personal attack on her person. Thankfully, they didn't have to follow the car for too long as they turned in a different direction at the stoplight. She had calmed somewhat by the time they neared his house, though the lack of conversation had been stifling. Her parents' SUV was already parked out in front of the house when they arrived. Caitlin pulled into the driveway and let out a sigh. Sorry, I'm not sure why I reacted like that back there, but you didn't deserve that. Come on, let's head inside and see what they're all up to. He flashed her a smile to let her know they were all right, and then opened his door. Jack hurried around the car with his school bag in hand, and opened her door as usual. Her attitude had bothered him initially, but their silent time in the car had given him enough time to think things over. At first, he had steamed and been emotional. Then after a couple of minutes, he had calmed and found himself able to think more clearly. It had been a freeing experience to realize that was all that she was doing. It hadn't been some personal attack, it was just an emotional response. That was as far as he had gotten before they reached the house. Still he thought it was progress, or at least he hoped it was. There would be future arguments, there always were. He knew that from watching his parents and arguing with his sister. It was all a matter of how you handled the aftermath that changed how happy you and the people around you were. Inside they found his mother holding a tense discussion with the Lockatures. Jack Caitlin. Good you've arrived, Chantal enthused seeing them walk in. Jack, maybe you can convince your mother to allow the council inside her domain. Um? We were just going downstairs to practice. You three can keep arguing about whatever this is, feel free to ignore us. He tried pushing Caitlin towards the hallway. Jack was intent on not getting involved in whatever mess they had found themselves in this time. Why aren't you allowing them inside? Caitlin asked, refusing to budge. He threw up his arms in defeat and looked at his mother. Because I am under no obligation to let them in. She replied simply. Now that I can restrict access, I am going to. But they're the council. John growled, pulling at his hair. Do you have any idea what this is going to look like to them? Eleanor shrugged. I don't particularly care anymore. They allowed Oberon to not only come back, but also let their own power diminish. Tell me why I should let any of them inside my domain. We have phones. We can even do video calls if we really want to. What purpose does letting them come here serve? Mom, don't you think you are just trying to cause problems for the sake of causing problems? It was something she used to say to him when he was younger, and now he had the chance to turn it around on her. The temperature of the living room grew icy as his mother glared at him. I should have named you Brutus. She muttered. This isn't Rome and you aren't Caesar. Eleanor stood in a huff and began pacing. Fine I will allow John's parents to enter, but only them. No guards or anyone else. Jack come, I'll need your help to keep everything powered while I modify the boundary spells on the fly like this. John, why don't you give them a call and let them know they'll be able to enter soon. Caitlin you might as well come down. You two can begin practice after I'm done with him. What's the real reason you aren't letting the council in? Jack asked his mother once they were ensconced inside the ruined control room in the basement. That was mostly the truth. I'm sending a message to the council. I'm not their dog. They have been ignoring me for years, so now I'm ignoring them. If I thought I could take it even further and declare independence, I would. However, I doubt that would go over well for any of us. Won't this just draw more attention to the family? Isn't that the opposite of what you wanted? Originally, yes, then Oberon appeared. After talking it over with your father last night, we realized that him coming back might actually be exactly what we needed. He, or whoever is masquerading as him, is going to stir things up just like last time. Which will take everyone's eyes off of you, and whatever you are doing now. He was beginning to understand. Exactly, so yes, it will draw more attention initially, but only until Oberon makes his move. And what if he doesn't? What if he revealed himself to you just so you would cry wolf while he remained underground? Then we would be screwed, but that won't happen. Don't forget, 
We have all the shipping manifests and other information from the warehouse. We know where they were taking whatever they were making there. Yeah, but he, she, whoever this new Oberon is, must have thought you might take those, right? Jack's head was beginning to hurt. Who can say, but I have to start somewhere, otherwise I'll just end up spinning in endless circles. Eleanor placed her hand on the control orb, putting an end to their conversation. Jack was familiar enough with what he needed to do, and put his own hands on her shoulders. Then he waited for her to begin, and did what he could to help the energy along. The process of changing the spells at the boundary only took a couple of minutes, like she had said, but the energy draw was enormous. Still, it was only a short time later that Eleanor pulled her hands off the control orb, and cracked her neck. Thanks Jack. I couldn't have done that nearly so quick and easily without you. He snorted and stretched. Holding his arms in one position was surprisingly tiring. If I wasn't here you wouldn't be having to go through all this. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I wouldn't change you or Penny for anything. The two of you and your father are my world. She reached out and stroked his cheek. Now go out there and begin your meditations with Caitlin. I'll be out in just a moment. I want to check on a few things real quick. He nodded and hugged her. I love you, Mom. I don't say that enough, but I do. You're the best. Outside the room, Caitlin was waiting patiently for him beside a newly drawn, ruined meditation circle. You know, in spite of everything that happened and how busy this weekend was, a small part of me still expected to find that she had found time to dig this out and inlay it properly at some point. She's good, even more than I originally thought apparently, but no one is that good. He nudged her inside the chalk lines. Are you ready? Are you? You just finished giving your mother a lot of energy. That just means there will be less pressure on you now. He shot back, sitting down on the cold concrete floor. That's true. Maybe I should ask her to do some big projects before all our sessions. She joked, settling down across from him. You nervous about seeing your grandparents? Jack asked, holding off from reaching for her outstretched hands. Why would I be? They aren't coming for me. Besides, my dad's parents are alright. They're a little weird because of the generation gap, I think, but they're nice enough. They are at least interested in getting to know me, even if they're not sure how to go about it. It's mom's parents who are the pieces of work. He nodded. That had been mostly the impression he was getting from the various conversations. Anyway, let's do this. We're wasting time. Jack put his hands in hers and closed his eyes to focus. Caitlin sent a spark of magic into the circle and began their training session. The runes had faded and burned away into ash once more when they separated a couple of hours later. Caitlin's eyes had the familiar glow of electric blue energy, barely visible underneath the basement lights. She exhaled slowly and flexed her fingers, tiny arcs of electricity jumping from one finger to the next. Each flicker caused a different popping noise before they vanished. How are you feeling? Good. The circle combined with you having a little less energy than before both helped, I think. Droplets of sweat plastered pieces of hair to her face, as the hot basement grew even warmer from the electricity in the air. Well either way, I think we're making progress. Under the meditative influence of the rune circle, Jack was able to catch glimpses of their magic mingling together. In the beginning, it had been a slow process. Now it was quicker. You are for sure. I can feel your control getting a little better each time we do this. She shook her head in amazement. It's only been a little over a week, and already you have made more progress than I thought you would. He stood and brushed the ash from his hands. I had a decent amount of motivation to get better. I didn't want to get blasted into another wall. He helped her up, and together they went upstairs while continuing to joke. All the previous awkwardness from earlier in the day, had already been forgotten. Penny was sitting at the counter with her eyes closed while their mother bustled about the kitchen. She looked up as they entered and held a finger to her lips. Pointing to the living room, she shuffled them out to where they wouldn't disturb Penelope. Is she doing her own training? Jack asked, peeking around her. He had never seen his little sister doing her exercises before. Yes, and she needs quiet. I had to send your father out back to play in his little shed, because he kept wanting to talk to us. She smiled at the thought of the man she had loved for nearly 19 years. When did my mom and dad go home? Caitlin wondered. 
It was shortly after I came back up. They made the call to the council and then left to prepare a spare room at your house for John's parents to stay in. My grandparents are coming tonight. She was a little panicked at how quickly everything was happening. No, they were still in Massachusetts when John made the call. They made emergency reservations on the next available flight, taking off for Dia, but it won't be here until tomorrow sometime. So no brooms? Jack was actually a little surprised by that one. Modern methods of travel are faster. They're fun for personal use and the occasional rescue mission in the forest, otherwise no one really uses them anymore. Besides, they leave you open to the elements and you get cold. Not to mention you can get spotted easily. Eleanor took a quick moment to fill him in. Ah, that explains why the council wants your running under cover spell so much. It's just one of many reasons, but it does help to contribute towards their desire, yes. Caitlin brushed the drying strands of salty hair from her face with a sigh. I guess I better get home then and help. Tomorrow could be a big day for us all. Depending on how they take the information, a lot could change. Eleanor scratched at her eyebrow with a nod. I've met them a couple of times in the past, and they seemed reasonable at the time. Hopefully that is still true tomorrow. She quietly clapped her hands. Anyway, I have to finish making dinner and keep an eye on Penny. I'm sure I'll be seeing you tomorrow, Caitlin. Get home safely. Jack showed her out and walked her to her car. Will I see you in the morning or will you be skipping school tomorrow, you think? No, I'll be here. If I stayed at home, I would only go crazy thinking over everything. It's better if I at least keep myself busy with some mundane schoolwork. Caitlin looked him over in the fading light with a grin. Besides, I could do worse for company. I'll see you in the morning. She finished with a wink.